And what I think is happening now is that the Torah gives us a map of this tyranny and slavery, and then it takes us into freedom. And it could be that the world now is kind of showing us what a world government organized tyrannical reality would look like, only to then contrast it to God's kingdom and ultimate freedom, a place where people can live life as they see fit and worship God in their own way. And it could be that we're meant to like contrast the dark with the light. And we need to see the dark one last time to then finally see the new light that will shine on Zion. But it feels like we are absolutely living through the prophecies that are said right there in the book of Genesis and right at the beginning of Exodus. It just feels like we're just in that story right now, right before our eyes. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with the core lessons of the book of Genesis. I've kind of numbered them down. I've gone through all of the sessions that we've done this year, and I've tried to extract the core messages. And then what I want to do is now like wrap them all up as we end off Genesis going into Exodus, because the truth is I'm like looking at Cal and Ardell and Brian and Mo, and I'm like, we're not going to change world governments. We're just not. So what are we going to do? What are we just like the people, the believers, what are we going to do? So Genesis says it's all on the inside. We have to now go on the inside. And then from that, each person, like what Ari said, our strengths, our weaknesses, that's what's going to bring the new light. And so, okay. So what does that mean? When you look at the book of Genesis, the same theme happens all the way through. There was Noah, one man, and then all of society was against Noah. And Noah had to be comfortable being different. Then you have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The whole world is thinking one way. And they're thinking a totally different way. As the whole world is living immoral, evil, Jacob, Isaac, Abraham, they're on the other side. Be ready to be different. I think Joseph, this one like Israelite that somehow like made his way down into Egypt, he never lost his belief. He never lost his identity. He was always a Hebrew. That's how he defined himself. And what does that word mean? Can we put it up on the screen, please? Look at the word Hebrew. In Hebrew, it is Ivri. That's how you pronounce the word Hebrew. That's what Abraham was. That's what Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph were. What does La'avor mean? It means to be on the other side. It means to pass over La'avor. Ever is on the other side. What is the essence then of the book of Genesis? It says, get ready. There's going to be a whole world of pressures coming from all around us. But a believer is absolutely comfortable on the other side. That's what it is to be an Ivri. In Genesis, in Deuteronomy, in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Hashem did not love you or choose you because you were most in number than any people, but because you were the fewest of all people. There is something that is so charming about the few in number, the Maccabees, David's army, the small group of people that are not going to follow the herd. We have a new word that we say all the time in our family. We call them sheeple because as we've gotten so close to sheep now over the last few months, just sheep follow whoever's in front of them. It could be Ari. It could be Ari's neighbor. It could be me. It could be my children. They just, as soon as they start walking, they just, they're not very smart animals. They just follow. And so we're calling a lot of the world now, not people. We call them sheeple and we don't want to be sheeple. We want to be Hebrews. We want to be on the other side of the sheeple. And so lesson number one that's written all over the book of Genesis from the very beginning all the way to the very end, no to being a sheeple. Yes to being a Hebrew on the other side. Number two, it's all about loving God. And what does loving God mean? It means loving life. It means you are all in. Every single matriarch and patriarch, they had their life and they were all in. They gave everything they had to live in an, as best as they could. And they were ups and they were downs. They didn't just like stay on the sidelines, they just kind of like try to survive through life and weather the storm. They took life on and they just wanted to gobble it up. And even in the darkest dungeons of the prison, Joseph was able to rise up all the way to Pharaoh. How did they do that? They lived in a relationship, a relationship with everything around them. They saw it as communication. They didn't see it as some universe that's just removed from them. And there's some speck that's fumbling through the world. No, there's a, a unity here. 
and the world is somehow in relationship with you. Everything around you is a communication. The men and the women of the Bible had no religion in the book of Genesis. They lived in a covenant. They lived in a relationship with God. That relationship was the source of their love of life. That love gave them strength in the good times, in the hard times. And what's very clear is that life is hard. No one in the Torah had an easy ride. That's not a part of the deal. Life is going to be challenging. But when you live in a relationship, that relationship powers you through every challenge. So that's lesson number two. Love life and we ought to all be in. Number three, when you really boil it down, the epic challenges of the patriarchs and the matriarchs of Israel were all revolved around the challenges of raising a godly family. Abraham and Sarah and Ishmael and Isaac and Asab and just every was just constantly trying to figure out how do we raise a godly family on this planet? All of them struggled. All of them struggled. The greatest spiritual masters of the people of Israel, all of them really struggled. All of them had challenges. How comforting that is for all of us, that their epic challenges are our epic challenges, that everyone just building our own homes is our most important task. It's like that's the genius of the prophets of Israel. Because on one hand, the prophets of Israel talk about world peace, that a consciousness is going to hit this world that's going to change the entire world. How is it going to happen, though? It's not going to happen from government. One person at a time, one family at a time. If every family in the world just took responsibility for their family. That's all it would take. The whole world would be changed. That's the underlying theme, is that family is the foundation of everything. And don't worry, it's going to be challenging. Even they had it hard. So it's okay if we have it hard. Number four, lech lecha. Go to yourself. All of our outward journeys of life in truth, they are an inward journey to allow us to develop ourselves, to reveal our soul in the world. All of the challenges and struggles that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Judah, all of them went through, it shaped who they were. It's what carved them into the marvelous people that they ended up being. It's what made them who they were. The language we used during the uh, series of Soul Map was it allowed them to reveal their soul in the world. When your body rules your life, you're always pulled to the immediate gratifications of the world, the immediate lusts, the temptations, the impulses. When you live life with your body in, as the driving force of your life, watch out. It's going to end up ugly. Our body is constantly pulling us toward the physical, toward comfort, food, sleep, the pleasures of this world. And in reality, this body doesn't really even like this world. <laughs> Aside from momentary pleasure, the body is usually suffering in this world. It's constantly in a state of trying to survive. Survival is the body's primary goal, and it pulls us into fear and stress and maybe momentary satisfaction. But that path following your body, letting your body be the captain of your ship, is the surest way to end up depressed and miserable. And so what do we say? Let your soul be revealed in the world. Your soul needs to rule the world. And so what happens then? The soul was created to flourish in the world. And as people grow and flourish, they're happy. We've learned that the Hebrew word for growth and happiness are phonetically, they sound like the same word, smicha, simcha. It's almost the same word because where is happiness? It's in growth and in flourishing. Like smicha literally is like a plant, a tzemach, is also another name for Mashiach, is a plant that's growing. When you're growing, developing, and flourishing, that's when people are happy. That can only happen when you're following your soul. Because when people, um, when your soul is the guide of your life, you enter into a journey of where you are now and where you could be if your soul was fully revealed. That is literally the journey of Lech, Lecha, go to yourself. This journey is all about finally just revealing your full self in the world. And on that path, that's where happiness is found. That's where serenity is found. To reveal your soul means to reveal the unique light that only you can bring into the world. And as you shine your unique light, you light up everyone's life around you. You choose to become chosen. 
chosen to serve as a conduit of Hashem's presence, as Hashem's light in the world. You become a light, a light unto the nations around you, unto the people around you. And that can only happen if your soul is in the driver's seat. Number five, Israel. The land of Israel, it starts with Israel. Abraham's told the first commandment given to the first Hebrew, the first Israel, the first Jew is like, go to Israel, make Aliyah, stay connected. That's where this thing is going to end up. Israel is the beginning. And how does the book of Genesis end? Jacob is like, get me to Israel. When I die, I don't want to stay in Egypt. Get me to Israel. And then Joseph says, when I die, I'll stay here for a little bit but get me to Israel. It starts with Abraham's journey to Israel and it ends with us not forgetting to get back to Israel. It's like God's plan is going to unfold in this land. And if you're disconnected spiritually from the land of Israel, you've removed yourself from the front lines of God's plan in the world. It looks like big tech, big pharma, the politicians are all directing the world. Make no mistake about it. God runs the world and he will use Israel as his vehicle to reveal his light. Just hold on and keep facing Jerusalem. Don't get distracted with all the fake news. Israel is the center stage. The forces of evil are doing everything they can to separate us from each other, to distract us with fear and news and headlines, separate people from the land of Israel, close down our borders but they can't close down our spirits. They can't disconnect us spiritually. The roots of every believer need to be planted in the land of Israel. And it's everywhere across the book of Genesis. It's all over the Bible. It's the reason we are called the land of Israel fellowship. Israel is the one thing that has the power to unite all the tribes, all the nations, every believer. This is the center stage that's going to bring us all together. And number six, and maybe the most important, the book of Genesis ends with Jacob, with Israel, blessing all of his children and the grandchildren that will become the tribes of Israel. That is the purpose of the whole Torah, to be a blessing in our lives, to bring light into our lives, to guide us toward blessing. And as we learn together, as we pray together, that the Torah becomes who we are in the world and we actually become a blessing. And then we have the power to be a blessing to all of our loved ones around us. But that's the goal here. The goal of everything that we're doing here is that we become a blessing and that we ourselves bless everyone around us. Now, if we take that seriously, this fellowship keeps on growing slowly but surely. The blessing is getting larger and larger. The light is going out farther and farther. They're trying to lock us down, but they're just creating more of a desire for people to connect on Zoom, for people to connect on the internet. And lo and behold, in the heart of the land of Israel, in the mountains of King David, there's this broadcast that keeps on going out. And more and more people are attaching themselves to this network of believers, more than 50 countries around the world. Something's going on. The blessing is growing. And if all of us become a blessing from around us, a new light is coming out of Zion. And that is the goal, that we should all be blessed and that we should be Hi, blessed. my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds and nationalities. It feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. 
We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feast, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each, and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehillah is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Ari Abramowitz in Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.